Welcome, as we gather here to celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And a special welcome to the Lamberti family as they celebrate their daughter Sarah's First Communion. Jesus likens God's reign to the abundance of a generous vine grower who treated the last as lovingly as the first. It is this face of God that Paul refers to when he says, I long to depart this life and be with Christ. Paul's faith recognizes the God who is generous and welcomes the latecomer regardless. May we too, in our own lives, seek to live with this same faith which can recognize the ways in which God is at work in our midst so that, like Paul, we will come to know and long to be with Christ. In addition to your own personal intentions, please remember the Mass intention for Patrick Kelly, requested by his family on the 26th anniversary of his passing. Our presider this evening is our pastor, Father Darrell Winkler. We've gathered this afternoon in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us be mindful of our need for God's mercy and God's forgiveness in our lives. Lord Jesus, you are near to all who call upon you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are a generous vine grower, no matter our labor. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you will be magnified in our living and in our dying. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now let us join Christians around the world in giving God glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king O god almighty father Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive 
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living in Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Live your life in a matter, manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about, and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others still standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose? with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Readings, the readings for this weekend really are, well, I guess they are every weekend, but I find them very meaningful to me. Maybe it's because of my situation right at this moment in my life, but they've been very meaningful to me. 
And so we begin with the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, which comes from a, a section in the prophet, a section for about 15 chapters, where the tone of the message becomes different. Because at the beginning of the prophet Isaiah, it's warning, warning, warning. You're not being faithful to God. You're not living out your life according to the covenant. You're not treating the defenseless, you're not helping people. And there are consequences for our behavior. That's the first many, many chapters of Isaiah. Warning people to get back on track. You're not being faithful. You need to follow the terms of our covenant with God. And then the consequences come about. The Babylonians come down, they swoop down on Israel and they conquer the nation and they bring them back to Babylon so there's an exile. A very devastating and traumatic experience for the people of Israel. And then at some point, they are being allowed to return home. And that's when the tone in Isaiah changes. It's one of encouragement, one of peace, one of hope. And that's what we hear today. And the message is, seek the Lord. You know, you weren't doing that in the past. You weren't seeking the Lord. You weren't living a good life. You were being selfish. You were being uncaring to your neighbors. You were looking out for number one. When you know the covenant says you look out for your neighbor, you look out for the widows, you look out for the orphans, you look out for the refugees. But they weren't doing that. And now he says, return, go back to where your spirit finds nourishment. That is following the ways of God, following the path I think one of the words in Hebrew is actually, you're not following the path, get back on the path that leads to fulfilling life. And being looking after number one is not fulfilling. It may seem so, but in the end, it's not. That's what the wisdom of the scriptures teach us. So here, seek the Lord while he may be found. And you probably know that hymn that was written not long ago, probably 30 years ago by Rock O'Connor. Seek the, That's how it, the words are familiar to me because I've heard that hymn. Seek the Lord while he may be found. But I think it's a good reminder for all of us because the, the passage isn't written just for me. Although I do take that passage, reflect on it in my life. How am I straying from the path? How can I continue to seek the Lord in my life? What is it that I need to do to really try to be the best person I can be? Because that's what leads to fulfillment. So that's the first reading. And he also mentions we can't understand the way the, way the God thinks. God is different. God thinks differently. That's what Isaiah, his message to his community, the community of Israel. Then the second reading is from St. Paul to the Philippians. He's writing a letter to another community in a Greek city called Philippi. And in the letter, we become aware that he's writing it from prison. He's in prison in Rome. And it doesn't look good. I mean, he's really, his life is in jeopardy. He's in a prison cell. He's been arrested for sedition, for subversive activity against the Roman Empire. So that's not a good thing to be arrested for because usually it means execution, some form. And there he sits in the cell, but he's able to write a letter to this community in Philippi. And what is, his, what's, what is he reflecting on in the prison cell? Well, about the end. What is my life? What's the meaning of my life? What have I been, what have I been living for? What has been bringing me joy? What allows me to experience real contentment and fulfillment? It's life in Christ, he says. So he begins to talk and he said, I'm in a real dilemma, he's writing to the Philippians. I feel a dilemma. 
If I survive this prison cell, that's okay. I don't mind it. I will continue to do what I have been doing, preaching God's word to people. The power of Christ and his resurrection I will share with those people. I will continue to do the work that God has called me to do if I survive. But if I don't, all of my life has been to be united with Christ since his conversion or since his experience, his overwhelming spiritual insight about who Christ was, that's all he lived for, was to be unified, that his life would be joined to Christ. And he said, that will happen perfectly in the world to come. So if I get killed, if my life comes to an end, it's all right, because I will be with the Lord. And that's the goal of my life now, is to preach the message to my neighbors, to my friends, to people who want to hear the good news. That's my goal while I'm here in the flesh, while I have a heartbeat, while my eyes are working, my ears and all of that. While I'm here in the flesh, that's my ministry. That's what God has called me to. But if it doesn't happen and I don't survive, that's okay because my spirit will be united with the Lord. That's his reflections. And he's writing this to the Philippians. So his, what he says is, you too, find life in Christ. Find your meaning in being united to him. Because that is the most fruitful way to live in this world. To be united with Christ. To follow his way. Which, uh, following the gospel, which means, it's not vastly different from what Isaiah says. It means listening to the commandments, which primarily is think of others. Think of uh, the well-being of other people and, and the world in which you live. And then the gospel today is much more, uh, I don't understand it fully, this parable. I do know that when we hear it, and this is how Jesus tells his parables, we side with the complainers. That's how it is. It sounds like we should, just like in the prodigal son. When I read that story, I'm on the side of the elder brother who is complaining, why are you having a party for that person? You know, he was terrible. He left here. He didn't care about you. Now you're throwing a party for him. What about me? So that makes sense to me. And then, because I'm an elder son too. I was the oldest in my family. And I, you know, and then this parable here, these people have been hired at six in the morning and they work all day in the vineyards, whatever they're doing, cutting grapes or I don't know what they're doing. Hard work. It says we labored in the sun, scorching sun all day. And then these newcomers come. They'd only been working for an hour and you give them the same pay as me? That doesn't seem fair. You see, that's how his parables, the parables of Jesus work. They make us want to side with what makes sense to us because we think in human ways. Jesus, didn't, Jesus thought differently. And what the parable is to be about, really, is to show us the generosity of God. That God is generous to those who have been following his ways from birth and he's generous to those who have been following, following his ways only for the last hour. That his mercy and generosity is hard for us to imagine because it doesn't go our way. He's thinking in a different way. But that's what this is about, this parable. It's really about the generosity, the love, and the mercy of God. It's hard for us to understand, but it's incredible in its mercifulness and largesse. So I'm going to end by thinking, you know, these are messages that we hear as a community. All of these were written for communities. And here we are. We are a community too. We're listening to these messages, all of us here, sitting here. We're listening. How does it impact us as a community? So one of the things we've been thinking about in the parish council is to have a kind of gathering. Now, it's hard when you're living in the age of pandemic. But we can still gather in the church for a kind of town hall, a general assembly, something like that, where we come together as members of a community of faith. 
And some who can't make it in person, we would also have it on Zoom so that it would be like a hybrid meeting. There would be a live situation here and it would be on Zoom too. So it would be both so that we could, and the purpose of the town hall is really how do we become, how do we build on the legacy that we have had for the past 60 years? A legacy which has been very active in social justice, concern for refugees, um, you name it, concern for the liturgy, passion for the liturgy, all of these things that we have as a particular how can we build on them? Because we need to continue always to reflect on ourselves as a community. What can we do more? How can we find a more fulfilling life as, a mem as members of a community? So that town hall, that's going to take place in October. In fact, one month from today, October the 19th at 7 o'clock. It'll be a Tuesday night. And you'll get more details. We're still figuring out exactly how we're going to work it out, but at least we have a goal. And the goal of that is to have a town hall that gives the parish council a mandate to work on, a kind of uh, things to reflect on how we can help this parish become a very, continue to flourish. So, so that's going to be on October the 19th. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm anxious to hear, excited to hear, the ways that we can become even more generous as a parish to one another and to the people uh, in our neighborhood and to the people in the world. Having listened to God's word, let us now profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the Spirit at work in our world, we may be confident that God hears all of our needs. For the church, entrusted with the riches of the gospel of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern nations and hold positions of authority, called to serve their people for the common good, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and needy of the world, defenseless against those who oppress them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our earth, that in this season of creation, and with a shared sense of responsibility to care for God's beautiful, life-giving creation, the goals of energy transition, reduced global warming, and protection of all life are attained, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose lives have been devastated by Hurricane Laura this past week in the southern United States, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose lives, for our Jewish neighbors who celebrate Rosh Hashanah this weekend, beginning the Jewish New Year, for prosperity, health, and blessings, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children baptized from the Vidal and Vivishika's families this weekend, that they will always find a home here and are surrounded by the care and support of St. Basil's family parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, as we live out our lives and our baptism, called to serve each other in the name of Jesus, as single or married people, lay ministers, men and women in religious life, deacons, priests, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our family and friends who are sick, we remember especially Louise Harridge, Archbishop Gervais, Amanda Manette, Toddy Kehoe, Mary Dietrich, Kevin Sloan, Frank Vyakur, Judy Stanishevsky, and Victoria Toro, we pray. For those who have died and for those, those who mourn them, we remember especially <coughs> Patrick Kelly, Ronald Jenkins, Mary Legault, and Andre France, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for uh, Sarah Lamberti, who uh, will receive her first communion today, for many blessings on her and all of the preparation that she has done, and for her whole family, that they be uh, real teachers and mentors for her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of compassion, may we forgive as you forgive and dismiss the debts and failing of others. Let us replace revenge with peace and resentment with pardon. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come and journey with our Savior who has called us from our birth, who has washed us in the waters and who loved us on the Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this Cup. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence, our Bishop, and Marcel, the coadjutor bishop, and all people, who minister in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We remember especially Patrick Kelly and Ronald Jenkins, Andre Franck, Mary Legault, and all who have died from the coronavirus. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Basil and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus, Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so we all have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
pastures ate manna in the desert. The but this is the bread the come down from heaven. Eat the this bread, drink this the cup. Body, the body of Christ. Come to me and never be the
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. We just have a couple of announcements. As per the Ministry of Health, the wearing of masks inside public places is now mandatory. Thank you all for wearing your masks. Please follow the directions of the ushers in leaving the church. This will help us all to retain our social distancing as we leave. We also ask that as you exit your pew, please leave the kneeler down. This will help the cleaner to know which pew was occupied. St. Basil's is having a series of dis discussions on the environmental encyclical Laudato Si. The discussions will begin on Tuesday, September 29th via a Zoom meeting from 7 to 8.30 p.m. If you have not yet received any details by email and would like to participate, please contact the parish office. The Caldwell Family Center is hosting a virtual Harvest of Hope event on Thursday, October 1st. This includes an online auction, a presentation on Rogers Community Network, and an opportunity to order a meal to eat at home on October 1st, or to arrange at a later date. For full details about supporting Caldwell in these ways, please go to the Caldwell Family Center website or St. Basil's Facebook page. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist has ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Let all things now living a song of thanksgiving to God our Creator triumphantly raise. Fashioned and made us, protected, sustained us, to I guiding us on to the end of our days. God's banners are o'er us, pure light shines before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night, till shadows have darkness is banished to forward we travel from light into 